Hey, this is Joe with The Recording Revolution. Let's make drum mixing fun again. Somewhere along the way, we all do this. We get to a point where drums are just frustrating. Some people revert to just not producing songs with drums in them because they're so frustrated with drums. That's a shame because drums are awesome. Today, I want to share with you a technique that I use when I mix drums that is super simple, arguably stupid simple, and gets incredible results. So stick around. I'm going to show you exactly how that works. By the way, if you want to learn my whole mixing process, this part of mixing drums falls under that bigger category of my five-step mix process. I've got a free guide you can have. Just go to recordingrevolution.com slash five-step mix to download that for free. You can divide this video into two parts. The first, we'll talk about this process and explain what it is. The second, I'll dive into some drum tracks and show you how it works. So the first piece of advice is spend plenty of time with the raw drum tracks. People love to skip ahead and start slapping plugins on everything, but that's the worst thing you can do because then every plugin causes a problem, usually, that you have to solve, and you end up chasing your tail trying to solve all these problems that you caused by adding plugins too early. A better solution is to spend time with just the raw tracks and get them balanced. Figure out where the overheads need to go in relation to the kick. You need to decide that early, then you can add plugins to further shape the tone. But if you get this wrong at the beginning, you're going to be using plugins to solve balance issues that you could have solved a long time ago by spending just a few extra minutes getting those balances right. We call it the static mix, but specifically with drums, it's especially important because there's certain tracks that, to me, no single track in the drum kit defines the sound. It's typically the combination of everything. So let's make sure we spend time getting that combination right. Once you do that, you're going to play a game, and it's a really fun game. It's a little like the Name That Tune game. Remember that TV show? The game is called How Great Can I Make These Drums Sound by Only Putting Plugins on the Drum Bus. So you've got all these drum tracks. You route them all to a stereo drum bus. This part of the process, you're going to just put some plugins on that bus and see how great you can make things sound. That's the way I really approach my entire mixing process. How great can I make this mix sound without plugins? which is the static mix we already talked about. Then it's how great can I make it sound with the fewest number of plugins just on individual buses. And then from there, I go in and put plugins on individual tracks if they need it. But a lot of times what happens, if you start on the top and work your way down, if you start with the bigger picture drum bus, you can a lot of times solve a lot of problems that you would have had to solve on the individual tracks by putting it just on the bus itself. For example, the snare drum is ringing too much. Ooh, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. You want to get rid of that. Well, guess what? There's a bunch of mics on the drum kit. Chances are more than one microphone picked up that ringing in the snare. So a lot of times what you can do is put your notch EQ on the drum bus, and that takes care of the ringing everywhere. So instead of putting that same EQ on four or five tracks on the individual tracks, you're putting it on your drum bus, and you've solved the problem for everybody. It's a very cool way of working, and what you'll find out is, man, these sound amazing. And sometimes you'll realize, I haven't put any plugins on the individual tracks. I just put plugins on the drum bus, and I'm really happy with the way the mix sounds. That's a win. Here's a quick rule of thumb when deciding what order to put the plugins on your drum bus. Typically, I'm just talking about EQ and compression. But you may say, okay, which, which one goes first? Here's my rule of thumb. It's super simple. If you're happy with the way the drums sound, just from the static mix, put a compressor first and then an EQ. If you're not happy with it, if there are still some inherent frequency problems that need to be addressed, put an EQ first, address those problems, and then compress. I like to compress sounds that I already like, and then that will just make me like them even more. That's the idea. All right, enough of my blabbing. Let's actually apply this to a set of drums. So uh, first thing I want to do is get a good static mix of the drums. Just get the levels right. Um, I've got drum tracks here. This is my drum bus, the way it works in Studio One. This is a folder and a bus. These are my individual drum tracks. So I'm going to come in and just slowly set levels for these and spend as much time with them as I need to. You can start wherever you want. I like to start with things like overhead and the room mics. Get kind of an ambient feel for the drums, then bring kick, snare, and toms in. So let's do that now. By the way, everyone's going to ask, what is the fat mic? That is a fat head ribbon mic positioned directly over the kick drum facing the drummer, like the drum throne. It sounds like this. It's just thick goodness. 
and I like to have a lot of that in my drum mix. So now that I've got my kind of ambient mics feeling pretty good, it's, it's, I, I love even this is like another version of that game. How great can it sound with just overhead rooms and the fat mic? Pretty great, it turns out. Now I'm going to bring in the individual kick and snare to get that presence that we're obviously wanting. Find one more Tom fill here. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so now we've got a basic static mix. The toms are pan left and right. The overhead is stereo. Everything else is up the middle. Uh, now let's just live with it for a second and see if we're happy. We'll go back to like a verse and see if we're happy with it there. Alright, that feels pretty good to me. I like to get the kick and snare a little bit hotter than maybe I want in the final mix because I know that when I add the compression to it, it's going to squash them down a little bit and make it glorious without them getting lost. So now I, I'm digging the way this sounds. I recorded these drums here in my studio, so we spent a lot of time getting them right at the source. So since I'm happy with that, I'm going to do a compressor first. Now I'm going to use Fat Channel, which is just a kind of a channel strip plugin in Studio One. And I'm gonna have the compressor first, and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this tube compressor. Normally I use a stock one, but we're, I'm feeling feisty today, so I'm gonna use this compressor because it has all the controls I want, but it sounds kind of like one of those cool vintage tube compressors here. Now let's just dial this in, and how good can I get everything, including cymbals, kick, snare, from just this one plugin? Let's see. I dig it. I want to mess with the snare and kick balance a little bit. I want a little more snare. I'm going to adjust the gain on this one up a little bit, just so it hits that compressor a little bit more. Now, of course, you're, everybody's probably screaming it in the chat. Oh, there's, it needs some EQ. The kick's a little boomy. Sure. But that's the, the point of this process is how good can I get it here, knowing that maybe I need to go EQ that kick or maybe an overall EQ to take care of some of that woom woom that's there. Uh, but this, I just love this process. Is it the perfect best process every time you want to mix drums? I don't know, but I use it a lot, and I like the results that I get. And now comes the EQ to kind of shape things a little bit. I'll use, I'll use just this vintage EQ here to do that final piece. Now this is coming after the compressor. So 
So already, to me, to my ears, and you're welcome to disagree, but I'm digging that sound that we've got. Let me just turn this plug-in on and off, and we can hear the difference between with and without these just two plugins, an EQ and a compressor. Well, compressor, then an EQ. It's just, it's just glorious. I will tell you, I know having mixed this song before, there's a ringing here on this uh, room mic. So the next step for me would be, okay, now do I need to do some stuff on the individual tracks? And a lot of times the answer is yes. Sometimes it's not because I can get it to sound great without needing to go any further. But on this specific one, this room mic, I don't know, I still don't know what it was, but there's this redonkulous ringing around 2.6K or so. It's just right there, and it just rings for days, so I'm just going to notch that joker out on the room mic, and I think that solves it on the whole mix. Now, this squarely is probably more geared towards rock music, right? For a pop song, I'd probably mix this differently. But when I'm going for just this cool, organic, kind of everything mushed together into a compressor sound, which is what I love, this is the approach that I take. I like the way the kick and snare are hitting the same compressor. So when you get those balanced together, they hit it at a fairly similar level and get a fairly similar type of compression. Um, but that's, to me, that's what's most fun about this is I get, I can cover kick and snare and get them sounding really great with just a single compressor, which as a person who nerds out on being efficient, this is just wonderful. Listen, okay, just listen to the kick and snare one more time. That's just with a compressor on the drum bus. I, I gets me every time. I just love it. Now, all that's left is for you to go try this on your own drum tracks. If you don't have any, I've got some that you can have for free. Just go to recordingrevolution.com slash MT, M for mix, T for together. That's a series of videos that includes multi-tracks. Once you sign up, you get the tracks. You can watch the videos, mix the songs. There's actually three songs that you can mix there, all free. Go check that out. Thanks for watching. Happy mixing.